Welcome back to the Northeast Video Game Realm. Your Shuli Nev G here, and today we're going to talk about the Nintendo Entertainment System. Not my first experience with Nintendo back in 1985 when they first came out in selected markets. I happen to live close to New York City, and that was actually one of the target markets that Nintendo went after to try to get and establish the Nintendo Entertainment System uh, as a great, great video game system. Even though they slid under the radar with the name Entertainment System, as they didn't want to be associated with the most recent Atari VCS or 2600 to most. The Nintendo very special to me. I received mine on my 10th birthday back in 1987 and I was absolutely in love. I had already experienced it. One of my friends who actually lived next door to me uh, had it from back in 85, almost two years prior to when I received mine. And I used to go over his house every day, just about every day, to play the few games that they had out. Uh, Gyromite, Karate Champ, Super Mario Brothers, uh, and a few others that he had uh, gotten for his birthday, Christmas, and, and whatnot from his family. So when I got it, I was ecstatic. I couldn't get enough of it. And uh, from there, Nintendo's always had a place, a very special place in my heart. Anyway, in modern times, of course, the Nintendo Entertainment System uh, is no longer with us, even though the original ones are still out there for sale, you can get them. I actually own one. Uh, Nintendo did something really cool within the last few years, though. They actually released a NES Classic. This little guy right here. Now, the NES Classic is cool. They basically took the form factor of the Nintendo Entertainment System and shrunk it using modern technology, emulating the Nintendo, and including 30 games with it. Now, beyond that, it actually came with uh, a controller that pretty much one-to-one -one replicates the controllers that originally came with the Nintendo Entertainment System. Uh, a great advantage to this NES Classic, though, are a few things. Firstly, because of its smaller size, it helps to save space for me, who I have multiple systems connected at the same time. I'm a bit constrained for space. Uh, additionally, it's easy to connect to modern displays uh, because it actually has a modern display connection, HDMI. Additionally, via an adapter, I actually got a couple here you can connect your original controllers now I happen to be a big fan of the max the max was the second controller that I got for Nintendo back then I still have a pair today and did I conquer a lot of games with it the great advantage to the max is its form factor you have turbo buttons below the normal A and B buttons and additionally it's a lot more ergonomic than the standard rectangular controller that came with the NES and the cycloid control pad was manual simply because you could either control it via the cycloid in the middle or using the outer diameter of the cycloid so what I did was I found out that Nintendo was reselling some refurbished ones via a few YouTubers I watch, Spawn Wave and Mad Little Pixel. Shout outs to them. If you ever come upon their channels on YouTube, I highly recommend to watch it. Always great content. Uh, Mad Little Pixel reviews and does live streams. Uh, Spawn Wave actually does reviews, in depth looks at products, actually opening them up and disassembling them and showing you different aspects of the products. And he does a, a, a daily news show called Newswave 
which I tune into every day. Anyway, shout out to them. So I wanted to show you the Nest Classic. I'm going to unbox it. Additionally, uh, talk about a, a couple things I did to prepare for this. And additionally, I'm actually going to uh, show some footage of a few of the games playing on there for you. And basically end the video and give you a little overview of my thoughts on the Nest Classic itself in general and some future videos that I'll be doing uh, relating to the Nest Classic because I plan to mod it and add a few of my favorite games. So with that, here's an unboxing overview of the Nest Classic. Okay, so here's the Nest Classic. Uh, I got this directly from Nintendo's website. It costs $49.99, which I believe is less than what it retailed for new, which I felt was a great deal. It comes with 30 games inside the box. We have the star of the show, the NES Classic, which is miniature replica of the original Nintendo Entertainment System. Super cool. Super cool. Then they also provide an HDMI cable. Very handy. Power cable. Our power supply. Nintendo controller, which for me were amazing. However, once I held an X, I didn't look back. I didn't look back at all. Now, my goal with this is to use my original NES Max on the NES Classic, and I plan to do that via this adapter by Hyperkin. These are inexpensive and allow you to easily connect your original NES controllers, whether it be the Max, the NES Advantage, or any number of controllers that connected to the original Nintendo Entertainment System. You have your adapter for the original NES controller here. Hello. And then this connects to your NES class. Very simple. Okay, here we go. Set up screen for language, of course, English. My first language. Um, display is important to set up. They have a few different options. For me, I like the as close to the original size as possible, which is a 4-3 aspect ratio, like an old school TV. And Balloon Fight is one of the first games I owned for the NES back in the day. And I haven't played it since the 80s, I believe. It's been a long time, but uh, hey, I'm not too bad. Still got the skills. Even though later on, when I got to later levels, Fish was hungry, and these guys got the best of me. So unfortunately, in the water I go. Yeah, I'll tell you a funny little story. This is a narration over what you're seeing, simply because I forgot to turn my mic back on. Dope. Anyway, here's some Mega Man, one of my top favorite series, not even games, but series of all time on any console. Uh, Mega Man 2 is the only representative on this set of games that they provide for you. And let's get to it. Bubble Man should always be one of the first levels you choose when starting out in this game. Because... Beating him is like a walk in the park. And the level itself has some challenges for sure, but nothing I can't handle. Haven't played this game in a while. In fact, the last time I played it was not this version, it was the Sega Genesis version, which I also have on my Genesis Mini. And uh, getting through the level here, I cut it short. I did not show the entire game session. Here we go, coming up to the big bad door for Bubble Man. And here is the man himself. And after 30 years, yeah, I still got it. He's about to go down with the Mega Buster. Like clockwork. Three, two, one, boom! Bye bye, Bubble Man. Uh, 
And of course you have the sequence where you get loaded up with the bubble blaster, if I remember. No, bubble lead. I should call it the bubble blaster. You shoot bubbles. Come on. <laughs> anyway. That was fun. Now to the next game. And they give you three save states per game, which is cool. It's great for us adults, especially if you're an adult playing this. We don't have the hours we used to when we were kids to play video games. Well, I'm sure a good majority of you don't. Some of you may. But um, it's great to have save states. Thank God for modern technology. So I wanted a little bit of... Uh, hmm little bit of uh, ninja guide into my life so here we go just gonna play through the first level quickly see how much rust that I've acquired over the years since playing this last I think the last time I played it was last year not too shabby that first level is kind of a cakewalk anyway. It's a good good level to get used to the controls and everything like that. This guy, now, he is uh, just a bit of a pushover. Especially using the max. With that turbo, you get some good strikes in, take down his energy quickly. And here comes one of my favorite aspects of this game, the cutscenes. I was amazed when I first experienced these back in 89. I mean, especially considering, you know, the depth of the story, as much as you can call it deep. But I had a nice little narrative that went along with the gameplay that uh, made the game all that much more fun. Kind of like you were playing a movie or a television show. Some suspense, some mystery, and plenty of action. And these are the first cutscenes that I think most experienced before playing uh, more powerful consoles like the TurboGrafx-16, Sega Genesis, and their CD counterparts the TurboGrafx CD, Turbo Duo, and Sega CD. Or Mega CD for you all outside of the United States or North America. But so, so cool. Still so cool all these years later. And I have to tell you one thing about these Ninja Gaiden games. The music is awesome. Absolutely awesome. For my final thoughts on this, I gotta say this console is awesome. Especially for $49.99. For those of you looking to uh, reclaim some old memories, or if you want to get back into video games and have something with a few games to play that uh, doesn't cost a lot of money, this is certainly a great choice. Easy to connect to modern displays, a lot of fun to play. Thank you for watching, it's great to have you all back. Like the video if you like it, subscribe if you want to see more content like this, and otherwise I appreciate your support and most importantly enjoyment. NebG out, have a good one. Peace. You win. Perfect.